Good evening, everyone. My name is Puvan, and I'm the president of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers for the University Tanagan National Student Chapter. I will also be your moderator for today. First off, I'd like to brief all of you on some ground rules for today. Firstly, to all the audience members, please turn off your microphones and video cameras throughout the session. And as for the participants who will be speaking today and attending the Q&A, please turn on your video cameras and microphones only when it is your turn to speak, so as not to disrupt the overall flow of the Q&A session. Also, I'd like to introduce our delightful panel of judges for today. We have, first off, Dr. Mina Loshini, who is our academic liaison officer from the College of Engineering. We also have with us uh, Ayad Chua Yolong, who is the vice chair, International Young Member Committee, also from the College of Engineering, and Ms. Evelyn Yap from the Department of Social Science and Humanities. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, Ms. Evelyn could not join us today. Hence, I will be asking her questions on behalf. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first participant, Amar. Uh, hi, can you see me and hear me? Hello, yes. Amar. Yes, I can see you. Uh, you good can evening. see me? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, Dr. Mina, you want to ask your question first or what? Uh, anyone may begin, sir. Either you or Dr. Mina. I'll be going okay. last. All right. Okay. Uh, how much time are we given? Uh, for each session, it should be 10 minutes long. But in this case, uh, I would suggest we have a maximum of two questions each from each judge. If you have maximum of two questions. Ah, okay, good. Right. Okay, that's nice. I have two questions. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, uh, Ahmad, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. I think it's very well yes. done. Okay, a very nice presentation on origami, honestly. I never Absolutely. knew that origami is so influential, to be really, really honest. Important and actually used in engineering applications. Now, your presentation topic has actually opened up my mind, okay, for a whole new perspective. Okay, so based on your presentation, I noticed that, okay, like you mentioned that origami is based on paper folds, okay. Thus, most of the material that you use there is uh, all are paper based. So I presume that these applications are highly not suitable for any flammable environment. And OK, I presume that is the case. OK, so can this origami uh, technology or applications be applicable to other materials other than the paper or to other more industrial application as well as environmental friendly applications? This is my first question. Your sec my second question is that what needs to be done or could be done to further advance this origami technology? Because from what I see, it's really, really like only NASA is using it, but many other applications are not available in our normal. That's why I have no idea about this. Okay, so those are my two questions for you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your question, sir. Mm. Uh, so I'll be answering them both at the same time because they are both okay. interrelated. Mm. Uh, so when it comes to whether other materials can be used, it can be. But however, in most engineering situations, the materials used are usually things like metal or heavy plastic. Right. And in these situations, things like hinges and other form of mechanisms that allow it to fold are put into place. However, even with this here, they do still pose a difference in the structural integrity of this material because if you were to add a hinge for example it provides a weak point unlike the concept of origami in itself where it's just one piece of material so something that is currently being done in many researches particularly in the medical field is uh, the use of smart materials essentially there are materials uh, there are many alloys that react a certain way to a specific force when it's applied to it so for an example there's a material that it's a metal that it's very thin that folds inwards when there is an electric force applied to it and opens back up when there's a magnetic force. Huh? So 
it is uh, i think they would be a lot more applicable this particular technology in uh, materials such as those that would be my answer okay okay i think so what can be done in the near future or maybe what what in your opinion this is what your opinion uh, can be done so that this thing can be actually more people know about this origami technology in your case what do you think i think uh, application more common day to day uh, observing common day to day applications for example an umbrella uses a similar concept the portable ones the small ones that we can fit in our bag uses that same concept right so if we were to say uh, put up a video explaining these very basic situations that we are all a part of that we all take part in every day and that this is all actually based on origami people will become a lot more interested and see it as more than just some artsy artsy thing mm. true true okay all right okay i think that's all for me it's very, yeah, very thank interesting you so much, topic okay thank you mr chua dr mina over to you Um, Dr. Mina, I think your mic has been muted. We can't hear you. All right, now you're unmuted. Sorry. Okay, Amar, uh, uh, using the uh, success example, I think it's towards the end of your presentation. Yeah. I captured, yeah, the cactus example uh, where you yeah. mentioned it took seven years to plan and construct it using the origami technique, right? Yeah. Okay, so if it... It uh, seems that the construction of origami can be. So, how do you think it could benefit uh, humankind in this fast moving world? I think that seeing the way it allows for something very large to be made small, compact, the most common application I can think of is for people in third world countries in uses such as creating temporary shelters that can be easy to transport from, say, uh, a far off continent. So that is the most common first world application, uh, third world application I can think of because it is a lot more relatable than something like, oh, sending a, a spacecraft out into space. What really does it affect the normal people in today's day and age? The complexity of it, I think, an issue with it is that not only the factor of time, but the factor of the material used. So I think if proper bodies, not just NASA, were to do extensive research onto it, it provides many benefits. Okay. All right. That's it. That's, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. You answered my good job, Amma. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mina and Mr. Chua. Now, Amma. Thank you so much for answering very diligently. It is quite clear that you've really taken your time to you know, get the research done and get the facts right and all. So well done on your part. So uh, my questions, or in this case, Miss Evelyn's questions are pretty simple. Uh, the first one is, what made you choose to deliver this topic amongst all of the available concepts out there? And what did you think about your own delivery in said presentation? Mm. As for why I chose this topic, I think it was mainly because I was very much on the look for something that was rather unconventional. So that is something I could, uh, something I could take part in because I felt that if I were to do something rather generic, it'd be something rather boring, you know, just a normal engineering concept. So I was looking for something unorthodox. As for the second part of your question, I feel like main, mainly I, very much struggled when it came to finding uh, more up-to-date sources of information. So the latest thing I found was actually the Project Starship thing, which was supposed to launch uh, at the end of 2020, but due to COVID-19, I wasn't able to get any updates on, on it at all, right? So that was one of the biggest challenges that I faced, but I wanted to get something that would stand me out of the crowd as something unorthodox. Right. All right. Thank you very much, Amal. I Thank really you so much. your answer. 
I think, you know, what really makes us stand out is if we do actually do something that actually stands out, you know, that really separates you from, you know, basically everyone else. And that not only yeah. applies here, but also when you move on to working in the industry later on. So yeah. um, I, I'm amazed, I'm flawed. Thank you very much for your time. And Thank you so we'll much. definitely get back to you uh, on the day of the results. Good luck, my friend. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. All right. All right. So that concludes our first participant. And now, without further ado, I'd like to bring forth our next participant, Azra. Azra, the floor is yours, my friend. Asuna, are you here? Hello? Hello? Good evening. Ah, good. Are you able to hear us clearly? Yeah, I'm able to hear clearly, sir. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, okay. All right. All right, okay. Uh, it's Chua here, Mr. Chua here. Okay, I have a few things, okay, to ask you, okay regarding your presentation. Okay, uh, to be honest, your presentation was, uh, okay, the topic that you have chosen is really, really again something that uh, reminds me of uh, last year's uh, International Sophie Champion from New Zealand. But it is the way that you present it make, that makes you uh, uh, out of the, if you have done it in a better way, you probably make it Okay, but the thing is, okay, first thing I want to ask you is why you choose to say shoot like curry and what does curry has to do with basketball? Okay, that is my first question to you. Okay, all right. The second question from your presentations, you're talking about three parts here. Short arc, okay, and then uh, so they call that the backspin and then the power generations. Are you able to relate to any of the science or engineering or technologies theory that you have learned in your mechanical engineering? Okay. And the last part is, in your opinion, is there any relationship between sport science and engineering? Are they heavily related? Why? Why what is your answer? And can you give me some justifications? All right, thank you, Mr. Shaw, for okay. the question. Is, is, that, is, uh, is that it, the questions? Yeah, three questions from me. All right, thank you very much, sir. So first of all, I decided to go, um, I put shoot like curry in the beginning of the presentation because first of all, uh, curry is actually, um, his full name is Stephen Curry. He plays for a team called Golden State Warriors. And currently, if uh, if you watch NBA, he's like the best shooter of all time. That's what, according to stats, uh, his ability. That's why I put shoot like Curry. And the reason why I put it there is because, like, uh, let's say if I want to make a presentation, not only like a Sophie presentation, if I want to sell my brand somewhere else, um, if you put your slogan like this uh, below your top below the title, I feel like it will grab attention and. Um, it will surely uh, spark interest for people to look into what I'm trying to say. And then second thing, how it relates to engineering, is it? So the reason why I chose basketball first, of, first and foremost is because uh, I'm a very big basketball enthusiast. I play basketball, I watch basketball, and I'm very fascinated how to shoot the basketball every time. There are some people who can do it uh, in a very consistent basis, like just like Stephen Curry. That's why he has a very high percentage shot on the field. That's why he's known as the best uh, basketball player in the world. So I'm very fascinated and I wanted to learn how that could happen. And obviously the, the way the ball moves, whenever a ball moves and an object moves, it's already uh, connected or interrelated with engineering. So in this case, the way the, the ball moves like it does is because the airflow and the trajectory and the way you shoot the ball. Um, so, 
one of the major uh, reasons or not reasons major okay maybe you call it reasons is magnus effect for the ball experiences magnus effect in the air so when it interacts the way the ball interacts with the air around it makes it um uh determines the way the ball is going to uh uh fall in the bucket or maybe you'll miss it lah so the way it spins the way the way it's um uh launched determines the trajectory of the ball so magnus effect uh the main topic here is magnus effect and magnus effect actually can be used in many uh, other applications so just uh for a like fun fact the first ever Not the first ever. One of the first ever uh, models for an airplane. They tried using cylinders instead of a traditional wing. So, by using cylinders and when it rolls, it creates a magnet, if magnus effect, and um, it also creates lift depending how you manipulate it. So, how it does, how it works is that when a ball rolls, like the slide in my slides, or my slide over here, when the ball rolls. and um, you can observe that the air the top part the part the top part of the ball moves in the same direction with the air and the bottom part of the ball moves opposite to the direction of the air so what it does what it creates here is the top part of the ball creates a downward force on the ball same can be applied to a cylinder or any other spherical circular objects so uh, like we know as we learn in uh, physics and all that the third law newton's third law of motions if there's a force there's an opposite and equal reaction reactive force against it so what it does is when the force is applied on the top part of the ball there's an equal and opposite reaction force applied upwards on the ball hence creating an arc so uh, basically if you see basketball uh, how the ball moves and all that the ball never really like goes fast like it's not like a cannon ball it goes straight and all that you don't launch it and it um it doesn't really move in a straight line so what the players would do try to manipulate the direction of the ball is they try to make an arc on the ball so that's why that's how the that's how the back spin works the back spin uh basically interacts with the air around it creating friction So that's why the ball slows down in an arc. And um, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, can you repeat the third question? Okay, my third question is: Okay, in your opinion, sport science, okay, are they really uh, heavily related to engineering? If yes, why? If not, why? And can you give me some some justifications? um i think they are related so basically in uh, sports uh, the body is like uh, used very extensively and it's uh, like if you see great players they try to push their body to the limits um to many heights to unprecedented heights so basically um where the engineering part comes in is that um how you use your body so basically if you want to shoot the ball yeah you you have to know the angle um the angle that you're going to shoot it or maybe the hand position that you're going to shoot it and then maybe if you want to create enough force you have to know your body position how it's going to be before and after the shot so all that i think it um requires engineering knowledge um like other than that it it, it uh it's because like um the bone alignment which muscle to use which, which bone to use it all has a uh, it all plays a factor la. so like um, if you're using the lumbar spine for example uh, usually that's how like nba players or maybe even other sports they try to generate power so like the more you move your body at an angle before you shoot and then if you get the body position right when you shoot there should be enough power to like uh, shoot long range shots and all that so i think sport science um like um like kobe bryant and michael jordan they have this um personal trainer for 30 years his his name is tim grover so um basically i read his book he said that he would work um he would uh basically 
like work with the athletes in a way that uh, they can utilize the body to the maximum, like maximum capacity. And also um, like, uh, it's not, it's, it's all about like technique. Like it's not all about power. It's not all about like being muscular or buff. It's all about technique. So yeah, I think it's uh, very heavily related sports science and engineering. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Chua. Dr. Mina, over to you. Okay, hi. Um, good hi, evening. Uh, hi, good evening. So uh, my question, uh, I noticed in your slide, okay, you did a good presentation. In fact, my first question was, uh, short with curry. Why? Why the word curry? But I had no. I, I have no knowledge about bas of of this basketball thing here. So, well, I guess uh, you answered the question. Secondly, um, how do you measure? You mentioned that uh, during a basketball shot, you have to you may have to measure between forty five to fifty two degrees, depending on the distance uh, to shoot. How would you measure that during a game or during a match? Okay, is that it, madam? Yes, sir. All right. So basically, um, how to get forty-five to fifty-two? Um, I mean, obviously, to do it on game, you have to practice it beforehand. And basically, um, before all this, like this angles forty-five to fifty-two. How do you know the angles before, like all this came? They they conducted like of uh, like a series of experiments uh, using like the a machine that should get an angle or uh, given power at a given uh, distance. So basically, uh, what they found out is that when at like 11 feet from the rim and 45 degrees angle, they found out that if you use that machine, the ball goes in almost every time. So like 99% of the time, the 1% maybe is like some uncontrollable factor. So, um, yeah, so when players train for their games and how to shoot, they obviously have to do it like um, many, many times to get the muscle memory in. And um, they can't really tell, like, if the ideal angle is 45 degrees, they can't really, like, like really measure, right? So, like, it, there's, there's a range, like, depending on the height of the person as well. So when, when someone's shooting the, bo the ball, it depends on the height of the defender, the height of the person, the person who's shooting, and also, like, um and also like uh they jump when they shoot so that also like could vary the angle so like some players they have a low arc some players have a higher arc so the best shooters in the game have a higher arc so that because like um uh so basically to get a higher arc you need a, like a very high angle uh when you're shooting so it gives like a at the rim, when the ball is about to go in, it gives like a bigger space the ball to work with uh, compared to like a lower arc. So players wouldn't really know. They just like uh, assume this based on assumption and their previous uh, practices and muscle memory. That's it. Hope I answered your question, madam. Yes, you did. Your, your, Thank you. Q&A was very clear, uh, very, um, you can see that you are very well. It's just that um, your presentation, you had put in a, 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 a little bit more effort in your presentation, it would be much better. But anyways, uh, and, uh, you have made it clear that you are very, um, very knowledgeable in this topic. So uh, good topic and good try. Okay, all the best to you. Good job. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you, Dr. Mina. Uh, hey, Azra. So I think uh, as what Dr. Mina has mentioned before, clearly you are very, very knowledgeable in this uh, topic. And I thank you until now. I don't think I've seen anyone as passionate about the sport as you are. I think it's pretty clear from the way you're presenting things. You really have a passion for it. So my questions are the same questions as what I put forward to Ama earlier. So um, why did you choose this topic and what did you think personally of your delivery in the presentation video? Um, 
why I chose this topic is uh, like I answered uh, Mr. Choi just now. It's just because I'm very passionate about it. And also because when I play it and I wonder why my shots aren't going in, why, why, why does it hit the rim and come off and things like that, I just want to um, make it make my shot better. So like, and Sophie came along. So what better chance to like, you know, just to go find out more and yeah, to present about it. So I guess it's like a very fun topic and people who watch it might learn a thing or two. And then uh, what I think about my presentation. Yeah, um, I feel like uh, right now thinking about it, I feel like I could have talked about the other, like uh, the hand placement as well. Uh, the hand position, but oh well, uh, we already <laughs> we are already here. But yeah, I think I did a pretty good job, to say the least. All right, thank you very much, Azra. I think you did a great job as well. I'd like to thank yeah. you for dedicating your time, not only uh, joining us today, but also you know recording the presentation and all. Like giving out a speech in front of a live audience is one thing, but you know recording it by yourself and making sure that everything's all right and you know there's no audio issues or frame rip issues is a totally different story. So thank you so much Azra. I bid you good luck as the judges uh, um, go over your video once again and your Q&A session and we'll definitely uh, see you soon. So thank you so much Azra. You may leave the You're session welcome. right now. Thank you for having me. Right. And with that, we have reached the end of our first ever virtual internal speak out for engineering public speaking tournament. We would like to thank all of the participants, all of the judges, Dr. Mina, Mr. Chua, and uh, in spirit, Miss Evelyn, and to all of the audience members who have joined us today. We hope to see you soon in our future events, and we're looking forward to seeing you all there. Thank you everyone. Stay safe and have a great weekend ahead. Goodbye.